the fermented cod liver oil is a challenge to this whole industry, the whole fish oil industry, the whole conventional cod liver oil industry. This is like the raised fist. I challenge you. And people are starting to ask questions now. Is the vitamin A in this cod liver oil natural? How high has this oil been heated? So they are very much on the defensive And this is a typical tactic of an industry that's under attack. Welcome to the Wise Traditions Podcast, sponsored by the Weston A. Price Foundation for Wise Traditions and Food Farming in the Healing Arts. We are your source for scientific knowledge and traditional wisdom to help you achieve optimal health. host, Hilda Labrada gore This is episode 116, and my guest is Sally fallon Morell, the head of the Weston A. Price Foundation. Today, we are talking about cod liver oil. If you don't know much about it, you've come to the right place. Cod liver oil is actually one of the main foods that the Weston A. Price Foundation recommends for a healthy diet. Our modern diets are sadly lacking in a lot of the nutrients that are found in cod liver oil. But in recent years, there has been some controversy surrounding it, and especially around a particular brand of fermented cod liver oil. So today, Sally clears up some of the confusion. She answers questions that have been posed about the fermentation process, the stability of fermented cod liver oil, how vitamin levels are measured in the lab, and much more. She also explains why she and her children and grandchildren are still taking fermented cod liver oil. Before we get into the conversation, we want to thank our sponsors. The Wise Traditions Podcast is supported in part by the Farm to Consumer Legal Defense Fund. The Farm to Consumer Legal Defense Fund defends the rights and freedoms of farmers, homesteaders, artisans, and consumers to grow, obtain, share, exchange, and sell nutrient-dense, local, sustainable, and artisanal food. Find out more at farmtoconsumer.org. And Kraut Pounder. Are you ready to get started with fermentation? Get yourself a kraut pounder from krautpounder.com. Each piece is made from solid maple natural hardwood. Visit krautpounder.com for more information. Welcome to Wise Tradition, Sally. Thank you, Hilda. It's great to be back on your show again. So today we're going to tackle the cod liver oil controversy. Some people may be listening and have no idea what we're talking about. Can you give us a little background on what the controversy is about? Yes, the Weston A. Price Foundation recommends only natural cod liver oil. That's cod liver oil that hasn't been heated. And one of the brands we recommend is a fermented cod liver oil, which means that the livers are fermented, that breaks down the cell walls and allows the oil to get out of the cells. And there have been accusations that this fermented cod liver oil is rancid, that it has vegetable oils added, that it doesn't really have a lot of vitamins and so forth. And we can go over those one by one. But let me first say that none of these is true and that the fermentation process dates way back. This is a traditional way of removing the oil from the livers. And that's the challenge. You want a natural oil. How do you get that oil out of the livers without heating it really hot? And I know you've taken these accusations or these questions seriously, and so you've had some folks doing some research into it, right? Yes, and we can get into that, but first I'd like to just give you a little history of my own experiences with cod liver oil. And you have to realize that cod liver oil was a big part of Dr. Price's work and message, because traditional cultures had very high levels of vitamins A and D in their diet, And he recognized that that was hard to do in the modern diet. We are not eating liver and blood and brains and marrow every day. It's just not going to happen in the Western world. But that's what traditional people did. And so they had lots of vitamin A and D in their diet. So he realized that a great way to do this was to give cod liver oil instead as a source of A and D. And that's what he did with his patients. He gave a combination of what he called high vitamin cod liver oil and high 
vitamin butter oil, which was an oil made from butter from cows eating rapidly growing spring grass. He gave this combination to his patients and got miraculous results with tooth decay, with growth problems, with all sorts of problems with adult diseases. And he felt that it was the vitamins A and D in the cod liver oil and what he called the X factor vitamin we now know as vitamin K2 in the butter oil. And I noticed that in your book, Nourishing Traditions, you mentioned that cod liver oil is actually a food, not just a supplement. And I've taken that very seriously myself. Yes, that's what we like about cod liver oil. It's not a vitamin pill. Cod liver oil is a food. So I've taken cod liver oil for many, many years. For many years, I was taking the cod liver oil that was provided by Green Pasture It was what he thought was a natural cod liver oil and probably extracted by steam, which again involves heat, but it is a traditional method of getting the oils out of the liver. Then Dave Wetzel, the president of Green Pasture, went to Scandinavia and he had a very eye-opening trip. He learned that most cod liver oil is extracted by this process called molecular distillation. So most cod liver oil is extracted by a process called molecular distillation, which involves a lot of heat, very high heat, a lot of processing that basically takes the cod liver oil apart and puts it back together again. And in this process, the natural vitamins are largely destroyed. And so what they do is they add synthetic vitamins back in, synthetic A, synthetic D. And he didn't expect that this was the case. He didn't know that the process was quite like this. Yes, it was a shock to him. But he did find that the one oil that he was selling was not made that way. It had the natural vitamins in it, and it was steam distilled. And the other thing he learned when he was there was that the old way of making cod liver oil was to ferment the livers and get the oil out of the livers that way. And he found a lot of old books about cod liver oil, and he found that there were four grades of cod liver oil. So one was a very light yellow, which the doctors didn't think was very good. Second was a regular yellow cod liver oil, which seemed to work fine. Third was what they called the brown oil, which had been from the fermented livers. It was translucent, sort of a reddish brown, and they said that worked twice as well as the yellow. They got results with both kinds of cod liver oil, but they were faster with the fermented cod liver oil. And then finally was a kind of a gunk, a dark brown, opaque gunk that was kind of what was left over when they were making the cod liver oil. And that was for industrial purposes and was not fit for human consumption. Mm-hmm. But there were two types of dark oil. One was the translucent that was considered very good. And then one was this thick gunk, which probably was quite rancid for mm-hmm. sure. So Dave said to himself, I'm going to come back and home and see if I can do this fermented cod liver oil in the United States. And he worked at it. He came up with it. He figured out how to do it. I got one of the first bottles of this cod liver oil and I started to take it. And Hilda, it was really quite amazing. Now, I had been taking cod liver oil for many years and enjoyed good health. But I was very concerned about my eyes because I was having very poor night vision. And the other thing that really scared me, I was getting floaters in my eyes. It's like you're seeing little insects go across your eyes. This was of great concern to me. When I started taking this fermented cod liver oil, the floaters went away within two weeks and they never came back. Mm -hmm. And my night vision cleared up. It's perfect now. I have perfect night vision which tells me that there was something about the vitamin A in this fermented cod liver oil which was different from the vitamin A in the cod liver oils I'd been taking. I was thrilled. I thought this is a wonderful product based on my own experience and I would like to see this product available to everyone. So we really encouraged him to continue and to improve his process and it took a while. And what year was that when he started fermenting the cod liver oil and preparing it in this different way? I want to say about 2006 or 2008, somewhere in that time period. Well, I just want to interject here that I have been taking this fermented cod liver oil for years, 
I don't get sick anymore. I don't get the flu. I don't catch colds. I feel so strong and vital. And for a time, when I did hear about this controversy, I was like, mm, I'm going to stop. And then I did catch like a little cold. So I was like, maybe I'll get back on it. But it wasn't just my experience, but some information that I got from you and others on the board that helped me see the value of this cod liver oil. So continue with your story, but then I do want to get to the point by point so we can answer some of these questions about the product. And I do want to say also that this is a fermented product. It's the oil from fermented fermented livers and fermented products are not for everyone and some people have reaction to cheese or sauerkraut and they might have problems with cod liver oil so I'm not saying it's for everyone and that's why we have others that they can choose from but I wholeheartedly recommend fermented cod liver oil and I would like to be able to say that there are a hundred companies making fermented cod liver oil. It's not that we're trying to support one company. I look forward to the day when lots of people are making fermented cod liver oil. It's good to know because one accusation may be, well, you're just supporting this company because you get some kickback or something, or you get some residuals. Not at all. Not at all. We don't get any residuals. The Green Pastures is a exhibitor and our gold exhibitor at our conference. So that means they pay more money than most exhibitors, but we have many gold exhibitors at our conference. So we don't get any fee or percentage from any of the products we recommend. That's right. And they do occasionally have ads in the journal and on the podcast. But again, that's a business relationship. And I really like what you said a moment ago. We're not saying everyone has to take this by any means. People can make their choices. We simply make as a foundation recommendations. And we are not going to throw some product under the bus because somebody else has accused it of being a bad product. As long as we think it's a good product, we are going to support that product. And we would support any product that's in our shopping guide, unless we had proof that it was a bad product. But we'll come to bat for any product in our shopping guide. So one accusation, I think, of the product is that it's rancid. How do we know about that? Or how do we find out more about that? Okay, so the first hint I got of this was, I believe it was in 2012 or 13, another brand of cod liver oil was at our conference, and they had a booklet about cod liver oil. And in the booklet, it said that fermented cod liver oil was rancid. And I kind of hit the roof. I went to them and said, you need to get rid of these. You may not distribute them at the conference. Because we have an absolute rule that exhibitors at the conference may not badmouth, may not criticize other exhibitors at the conference. I said, you talk about the good things about your cod liver oil. You may not criticize others. I mean, that's just common sense. We don't want a conference where there's a lot of bitterness and bad feelings. So they did. They withdrew those. They did not distribute them. Well, uh, about two years later, I received an email from Dr. Kayla Daniel talking about that she had these terrible concerns about fermented cod liver oil, that the test showed that it was rancid, that we shouldn't be recommending it, and we needed to apologize to our members for recommending it. Well, I took this very seriously, and the first thing I did was went to my cupboard and I took a bottle of fermented cod liver oil and my husband took it down to the post office and we overnighted it to a lab in the UK. I checked with someone who knew a lot about this and she said, this is the lab, the very best in the world for testing for rancidity. And they tested it and they emailed me back and they said, we have found no rancidity in the cod liver oil. In fact, it's the most stable marine oil we've ever tested. And even when we heated it, it was stable. So I showed this email to Daniel and said, everything's fine. We don't need to worry. This cod liver oil is not rancid. But unfortunately, that did not stop all the rumors and the accusations. But now, as I mentioned earlier, the old text talking about cod liver oil did talk about the opaque Industrial cod liver oil is being really stinky, and that definitely is rancid, but that's not what this oil is. This is the reddish-brown translucent cod liver oil. And the real question is, why is it so stable? Why doesn't it go rancid? A lot of omega-3s in there. It's a very interesting question, and we think it has to do with the phenols that get created during the fermentation process. But we don't know all the answers yet. 
Now, some people think that because they shudder when they take it or it tastes funny that that equals rancidity, but that's not true, is it? No, no. The taste, all cod liver oil tastes bad. (laughs) That taste is actually proteins in the oil, residual proteins in the oil that give it that fishy taste. And that's not rancidity. Rancid cod liver oil smells and tastes like varnish. It doesn't smell and taste like fish, but like varnish. Now, the one problem with the fermented cod liver oil, sometimes it burns your throat. I have noticed that over the years, this happens less and less. I think it had to do with quality control. But people who are very sensitive to histamines and things like that in fermented foods, obviously, this is not the product for them. Coming up, is Green Pastures fermented cod liver oil adulterated with vegetable oil? And where are these accusations coming from? We want to pause now and acknowledge our sponsors, the Farm to Consumer Legal Defense Fund. They defend the rights and freedoms of North American farmers, homesteaders, artisans, and consumers to grow, obtain, share, exchange, and sell nutrient-dense, local, sustainable, and artisanal food. It is a true grassroots nonprofit organization, with the majority of its funding coming from membership fees and individual donations. Any corporate funding that they get comes from small, like-minded businesses. So please consider a donation today at farmtoconsumer.org slash donate. Tax-deductible donations are available through its sister foundation at ftcldff.org slash donate. And thank you. Are you ready to get started with fermenting? Well, then get yourself a Kraut Pounder from krautpounder.com. Kraut Pounder makes beautiful pieces for the process. You might as well do it in style. Each kraut pounder is turned from a solid piece of maple, natural hardwood. They each have their own unique markings and are finished with natural walnut oil. These are quality pounders that were inspired by a kraut pounder that belonged to the grandmother of a member of the Eugene, Oregon, Weston A. Price chapter. You've got to check it out. So go to krautpounder.com and get fermenting today. Hey, and don't forget that you can go to the westonaprice.org website to get a free booklet about Dr. Weston A. Price and the principles of the foundation. These are excellent resources that will enhance your health, and they're free. So go to the website and click on the button that says Request Free Info Pack. That's it. Now let's talk about one of the other accusations or rumors had to do with vegetable oil in the product. What can you tell us about that? The test that Daniel referred to found trans fats in the cod liver oil. And so the accusation was that green pasture was adding vegetable oils to the cod liver oil, cutting it with vegetable oils. Well, it turns out that all marine oils contain trans fats. (laughs) They are produced by fungus in the ocean that the fish feed on. And why should we be surprised? All animal fats contain trans fats too. Very small amounts that are actually beneficial. We know that the trans fats and dairy fats are beneficial. We don't know anything about these trans fats in cod liver oil or fish oils, but they are natural and it is not a sign that vegetable oils are being added. In fact, we would know immediately if there were vegetable oils there because we'd find a lot of these rancid breakdown products and we didn't find any in the cod liver oil. So these trans fats are naturally occurring, is that what you're saying? Yes, they are naturally occurring. And again, this is a big area for more research. Let's see what we can find out. And you are planning on doing more research on this, aren't you? Yes, we have a whole research program planned for the upcoming year. Fantastic. So talk to me a little bit about the vitamin levels. Some people were concerned that the vitamin A levels were particularly low in a product where they thought they should be higher. Well, first of all, let me say, to me, it really doesn't matter what the lab tests show, because I know that that vitamin A had a very positive effect on my eyes. And that's the number one role of vitamin A is to help your eyes. And all of the problems with my eyes went away when I was taking this cod liver oil. But what we have found is that it's a big can of worms to test for natural vitamins. When you send to USDA-approved labs, they can find out how much added vitamin is in there. But they do a very poor job of finding natural vitamins. Hilda, there are over a thousand forms of vitamin D, and there are probably hundreds of forms of vitamin A, and they just simply don't know how to find those things. So we hope to do more research on this, but I will say that some labs we used did find very high levels of vitamin A and vitamin D in the fermented cod liver oil and in the other natural brands of cod liver oil we recommend. 
What about the people who said that their own vitamin D levels were low and they were shocked because they had been taking it for a while? Can you speak to that? Well, that's a whole nother question. What should our vitamin D levels be? And, you know, when the vitamin D craze took off, there were a lot of doctors saying your vitamin D should be over 50 or even up to 80. And now we realize that that's way too high. The ideal vitamin D levels should be between 20 and 40, according to Chris Masterjohn. And I think the real thing is, are you showing any signs of vitamin D deficiency like immune problems or things like that. So for a person to say they've been taking it all these years and their vitamin D levels aren't really high, uh, that's probably a good thing. It's showing that your body is metabolizing that vitamin D properly and using it and not just dumping it into your bloodstream. The key thing is it's not actually a good thing to have your vitamin D really high in the blood. Let's talk about this product in particular. Some people were saying that Dave Wetzel was not using all cod in the cod liver oil, that he was using a different kind of fish, pollock, I think. Yes, he was uh, using pollock. Well, now, his livers come from Alaska, very clean waters there, and pollock is a type of cod. In fact, it has been reclassified as gadus, G-A-D-U-S, which means cod. So it's just a type of cod. I mean, that's a very poor criticism. And there's many, many fish that the government allows to be called cod. Some of them aren't even cod, but pollock is cod. So diving in a little bit more into the concerns that Daniel brought up, she was mentioning a Dr. Rudy Mork. And what was his involvement in this whole thing? Daniel refers to a YouTube presentation by Dr. Rudy Mork about fermented cod liver oil. And Dr. Mork is the president and CEO of a company called Valenza, which makes fish oils by molecular distillation, so very highly processed fish oils. And he kind of gives a long, rambling presentation. What he basically says is, well, yes, they used to ferment the cod livers to get the oil out, but you couldn't do that today. That was his main criticism, that you can't do that today. And he's heavily invested in the competing technology here, okay? And he's just absolutely wrong on that. You can do it today. We have all the technology at our fingertips to do this in a very controlled way. And this is what we should be doing today. Now, some of the questions that he raises, he says we shouldn't be even using fish liver oils because the livers are toxic and they're a filter. I've heard that before. And we've heard that about other kinds of liver too. And we always point out the liver is not a storage organ and there are places in the animal that are going to be a lot denser in toxins than the liver. And plus the vitamin A that you get from the liver is your number one defense against toxins. So you're kind of shooting yourself in the foot not to eat liver or cod liver oil. The other thing he says is that we shouldn't be taking vitamin A, that is toxic, and that we should be eating vegetables to get our vitamin A. And you know the Weston A. Price Foundation has long pointed out that it's very difficult to get adequate vitamin A from vegetables. I like to compare this to the debate about raw milk. On the one hand, you have the industry pushing ultra-pasteurized milk. And then on the other hand, you have raw milk coming from small farms and grass-fed cows. And I think it's a very good comparison. Most brands of cod liver oil today are molecularly distilled. This is like ultra-pasteurization. And Dr. Mork is in that industry. He is defending his technology there. And, you know, who can blame him? That's, he's invested in that. Whereas the natural cod liver oils, and such as the fermented cod liver oil, they're like raw milk. And here comes this new little industry along, and they have presented a huge challenge to the industry, which almost all cod liver oil today is made by this very high-tech molecular distillation, which basically destroys the oil. And then it's being sold as cod liver oil, but people don't realize it's not the same as a natural cod liver oil. Just as most people don't realize that there is a big difference between ultra-pasteurized milk and raw milk. So I think it's a very good analogy, shall we say, about what's going on. It is. And your conversation about Dr. Merck makes me think, what was the motivation of Kayla Daniel and others throughout these accusations? Were they really concerned about our health or did they have something invested in all of this? The fermented cod liver oil is a challenge to this whole industry, the whole fish oil industry, the whole conventional cod liver oil industry. 
all the investment that's gone into these very expensive molecular distillation plants in Scandinavia. This is like the raised fist. I challenge you. And people are starting to ask questions now. Is the vitamin A in this cod liver oil natural? How high has this oil been heated? So they are very much on the defensive. And this is a typical tactic of an industry that's under attack. We've seen the same thing with butter. Butter was a challenge to the trans fats. And so what did the vegetable oil industry do? They demonized the butter and they demonized the lard. So it's the oldest trick in the book. When you have got a competing product, you just badmouth that product. I think I've seen this in politics too. <laughs> yes, it happens a lot. It happens a lot. Again, I'm not saying anyone has to take this cod liver oil. I'm not saying that anyone has to take cod liver oil. These are our recommendations. We have three recommended products. But again, we are going to defend good products, just like we defend raw milk. We're not going to throw any good food under the bus because some other competing industry has attacked it. So if people want to know more about this, where can they go to dig deep? There are a lot of articles on this. This has been going on for a long time. On our website under Cod Liver Oil, we have a section called Cod Liver Oil Controversy. And there are articles there where we point by point answer all these accusations and also where other people have written to us. People spontaneously sent us articles defending the cod liver oil. And one of them was very interesting. It said, if this oil were rancid, we would find low levels of omega-3s in it because it's the omega-3s that break down first. But the tests show that the omega-3s are right where they're supposed to be. So you're not seeing a lot of breakdown in this cod liver oil. But anyway, many, many articles that kind of lay it out point by point under the topic of cod liver oil controversy at westonaprice.org. Good. We'll put links to some of those articles in the show notes. So I'm going to ask you the question I often ask at the end. If the listener could do anything to improve their health, maybe even regard to what we've been discussing just now, what would you recommend that they do? I recommend people take cod liver oil so they can get the levels of A and D in their diet that traditional cultures got. And remember, this cod liver oil needs to be taken in the context of a diet that provides vitamin K one way or another. Uh, could be cheese, it could be fermented, you know, aged cheese, it could be duck fat, emu oil, high vitamin butter oil, and that also provides saturated fat because you need the saturated fat to balance the unsaturated fats in the cod liver oil. Excellent. Well, thank you for our conversation today. Thanks for having me, Hilda. Thanks for letting me clarify all this. My guest today was Sally Fallon Morell. For more on Sally, subscribe to her blog, nourishingtraditions.com. For show notes from today's episode, including links to articles and resources we mentioned, just go to the westonaprice.org website and find the show notes for episode 116. Hey, and a big thank you to Podcast Village, to Rob Ford, and the team of interns for the show, Cynthia Castro Cohen Enriquez, Joy de los Santos, Elisa Canty, and Amy Marvin. I appreciate you all so much. Hey, and everybody, stay tuned for next week's episode where we discuss the powerful benefits of light therapy, specifically how saunas can help address our lack of sun exposure and can help us address issues like acne, insomnia, adrenal fatigue, and more. And those were just issues that our guest Brian Richards had to deal with before he got into all of this. That's about it for today, everyone. So don't forget to stay connected with me at Holistic Hilda on Twitter, at Holistic underscore Hilda on Instagram. My website is HolisticHilda.com. You'll find resources to support your own wellness journey there, and you will find supports to start a podcast of your own. So check it out. Thanks, everybody, and keep listening. If you enjoyed today's episode, please share it with others. Post a link on Facebook or Twitter or send a link to a friend in an email, or simply review Wise Traditions on iTunes. Sharing the podcast is one way to spread the important message of health through nutrition. Wise Traditions is brought to you by the Weston A. Price Foundation for Wise Traditions and Food Farming in the Healing Arts. The content of this podcast is provided for informational purposes only and is not intended as a substitute for medical advice.